Thank, thank you. Mau pengaga yang tanan. Uh, may I just have a quick announcement. I hope Alan, may dakan na bagong ang silya at mga gamit. Siguro wag mo naman tatasan yung singil mo pareho pareh na no. I'd like to thank uh, Miss Maria Reza of Rappler for uh, having me here, inviting me here, and uh, the uh, good governor of Leyte, Dominic Pitilia, and uh, mayors that are here, and the uh, different members of uh, the government and uh, the private sector. Again, maupang aga yung atanan. Yes, there were many stories to be told, happy and sad, but more so, I think, there are a lot of lessons to be learned. Not only from the stories and experiences, but it's about time that we pay a closer attention to scientific data. A lot of people were asking me, Mayor, what were you doing in the peninsula ground zero, knowing that Typhoon Yolanda was coming? I'm sharing this information to all of you so we can learn from it. It was about 7 o'clock in the morning when we were patrolling and evacuating people. I got a call from the two-way radio that we have in our patrol cars coming from the detachment that we put in Dio Island, which is in front of the airport about close to about two and a half to three kilometers. Exact words, Mayor, dito sa isla, halos wala ng tubig at pwede kami maglakad mula sa isla hanggang sa Tacloban. Kaya, I was caught by surprise. Immediately, I informed my family, stay put, do not move, because when a tide recedes, automatically you think of a tsunami. But I was caught aback because we were expecting the typhoon to hit much, much later, not at 7 o'clock. So when we were there, after a few minutes, three consecutive waves hit us. The first one crept in slowly, which, is about, which was about a meter in height, followed by another wave, which was about two meters in height, and the third one came about six to seven meters in height and did not go back to the sea till after two hours. That's why we only had a few minutes to save ourselves from the uh, storm surge. Now, what are lessons to be learned here? I've heard people did not understand what a storm surge is. But actually, in reality, when we listen to weather forecasters and they say that you will have a Category 5 typhoon and you will have storm surges, five meters, six meters, seven meters. Do we really know how far inland is that seven meter water going to go? Is it going to hit only 10 meters, 20 meters, or one kilometer inside? So now we're learning that 
we have to translate scientific information to our people so that it could be better appreciated and understood so we can be more prepared. Yes, we talk of resilience, we talk of building back better post-disaster, we talk of climate change adaptation. Those are world topics now that from the national level, we've got to cascade that down to the local level para maintindihan natin ano ba talagang ibig sabihin lahat yan. Tacloban City is quite different from other local government units in the region. Why? Because it's an urban center. Basically, it's the capital of the region. I will go back to the first few days. We were hearing a lot of complaints that there were not enough relief goods. Yes, that is true. But why? Being a capital city, during the day, the Cloban City's population increases to 300 to 400 percent. From our normal population to 240, 250,000, we have a population during the day of almost a million. This is pre-Yolanda. 90% of the banks are in Tacloban. We have four universities, and the four universities, almost 90% of the students are not from Tacloban. So when the typhoon hit, many responders were relying on the data that said our population is 240,000, or even that 220,000 as recorded, and yet it was close to a million. All the hotels were full, to jam pack with people. Because as practice, every time there is a storm, everybody goes to Tacloban City for shelter. Why? Because it's close to the hospitals, it's close to the drugstores, it's close to the airport for immediate accessibility. These are now things that we are learning. Things that we have to understand. That's why I was looking at videos, documentaries, even in 9-11 New York. Immediately after that disaster, the National Guard protected the routes, the routes entering the city and going out, preventing people to all converge in a disaster area. This is what happened in Tacloban. In fact, I saw personally several municipal mayors who were in my office the following day. And we had an avalanche of people coming in to Tacloban City. And yet at that time, we only had about three to four dozen policemen left. It was very difficult to address. No nangyari yon, when that happened, people came in looking for relief. They did not get relief. Then that's when the looting started and even a jailbreak. There was a breakdown of systems in our city. When you're hit by a disaster, immediately what is challenged there are your systems that you have in place. You talk of resilience now, yes, you must have a robust system, you must have redundancy in your system. These are things now we are absorbing and learning. That's why I'm telling you these stories so you will understand what happens in a disaster. Even Katbalogan City was a victim because they doubled their population 24 hours later, because plenty of Taklobanons ran to Tacloban, oh, to Katbalogan City, and their population doubled. In fact, the mayor was already on panic mode when that happened. How do we now continue the basic services, social services, 
bouncing back. So lahat yan. So now we have the most powerful storm hitting us. We learn from that. What's the role of government? What's the role of your city? Being the uh, center of the region. We must institutionalize all the necessary mechanisms in order that we can cascade all the way to the grassroots resources that are needed. During a disaster, there is competing priorities. There are competing priorities that we have to address all at the same time. And yet, we discovered 70%, 70% to make this all happen comes from the private sector. I think you've experienced that. You, less, you lost your cell phones, there's no signal, that's with the private sector. You need groceries to open, that's with the private sector. You need banks, that's with the private sector. What's the role of government? See, so we have to understand that. We have to now push for more collaboration. I think you've heard that. Pero mahirap naman mag-collaborate. Kailangan, even before we collaborate, we must have an understanding that we must get scientific and correct data and that we share and we discuss and we come up with new innovations, new policies, new programs so we can address good governance in a post-disaster. We can address social needs, infrastructure, education, and the environment. Putting now sustainability there, resiliency there. Ah, kailangan natin gawin. This is a big job. And sorry for the bad news, it starts now. Because after the humanitarian stage, many of the donors leave, and we're left now to rehab and to reconstruct. And this is what we have to do. So I'm asking you all out there, we are going to work together to build back the city and to build back the region. But before I leave, just two more statements. It is not bad to talk about this. We have to keep reminding our people. We have to have a new mindset. Baguhin natin paano tayo namumuhay. These are realities. We have danger zones out there. We are hearing arguments that they will not move because they don't have livelihood, but you will die if you stay there. Safety. Let's save the next generation. In danger zones, we should not compromise. We should not live there. Safety first. Ito lang, gusto ko, i lahat sa inyo, na napaka-importante lang. Damo nga, salamat. Hindi rin ako maghinalaba kay Brian after time. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor.